Hi, and welcome back to part 3 of the F5 iRules LX tutorial. Please check out my previous videos to learn what iRules LX are and make sure you follow all the configuration steps in the previous parts of this tutorial. In this part we'll focus on the JavaScript or the Node.js part of the configuration. As a quick reminder, we're trying to query an external IP reputation database for every new incoming TCP connection from a client PC. The result of that query is going to determine if that connection will be allowed or dropped. Now, of course, all of the above can be accomplished using the IP reputation or the IP intelligence module on the F5 box itself. In fact, this external IP reputation database I'm using is nothing but another external F5 box using the IP intelligence module with an IRO. However, the F5 box that we're configuring in this tutorial is going to use HTTP to communicate to that external database. After all, our purpose here is learning and practicing the iRules LX using Node.js. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the HTTP profile from our virtual server. It's no longer required. Next, let's open our workspace and make sure the TCL iRule part of the configuration is there. This code is the result of part 2 of this tutorial. Let's continue working on the JavaScript or the Node.js part of the configuration. Let's review the code first. Line 1 is an optional JavaScript command activating the strict mode. JavaScript is very forgiving in certain cases with various coding mistakes. For example, in certain cases it will actually go ahead and create global variables for you in case you forget to do it yourself. I prefer the strict mode because overall more error messages are displayed and it makes troubleshooting my code a little bit easier. Next, we import our various Node.js modules using the require function. F5 Node.js is the default F5 module. Request is an external module we're gonna utilize for HTTP requests. String is another external module we're going to use to parse the HTTP payload of the IP reputation query to find the result. Please note that before we can actually start working with external modules, we need to go ahead and manually install them using the NPM, the Node Package Manager. Let's go ahead and do that now. First, we need to change our directory into the extension folder we're currently working on. Once inside the extension folder, let's use npm to install our missing external modules. Please note that the F5 Node.js module is already here by default. Let's first install the request module. Followed by the string module. Please note that the request module actually installed all of the dependencies it requires to function automatically. After installing the external modules and their dependencies, we can now start using these variables to access the various functions in each module. First, let's create the RPC server object using the ILX server method from the F5 Node.js module. Next, adding a method to the RPC server object is required. Please recall 
the method name we used in part 2 of this tutorial. This is the part when we actually go ahead and create one. This method name has to match the method name we used in the TCL IRL part of the configuration. The second argument of the add method function is the callback function, which is gonna be executed each time this method is invoked by the TCL IRL. The arguments received from the TCL IRL over the RPC connection are going to populate this object. The second object is the object we're going to use to send a reply back to the TCL part of the configuration. Whenever this callback function executes, let's log a message to var log LTM showing the arguments received from the TCL IRL using the params method of the arguments object. Next, I create the error code variable with the initial value of 1. Before reviewing the code that actually generates the HTTP traffic, let's have a look at our database. Let's try an IP address. As you can see, this is nothing but a simple HTTP GET request with an IP address at the end of this URI. In addition to the location data, we also receive the IP reputation result here. Let's review the actual HTML code. Please note how the result of the actual IP reputation query is inside of this span element. We'll use this information to parse the HTTP payload and extract this value as a result. Next in my code, I'm executing the HTTP function to generate the actual HTTP GET request to the IP reputation database using the URI structure it expects. The params method of the arguments object returns an array. I just need the first and the only member of this array because only a single parameter or an argument is being passed to me from the TCL IRL side of the RPC connection. This argument is the client IP address, which I'm adding to the end of my query string. The next argument of the HTTP function is the callback function. These callback functions are essentially the asynchronous input and output provided by the libuv library we discussed in part 2 of this tutorial. So because of that, this HTTP function is a non-blocking function and this callback is only gonna run once the HTTP request completes. So once the callback for the HTTP function is executed, which also means that the HTTP request has been completed, we'll test the status code to see if the successful HTTP 200 OK result was received. If so, I'll use our external string module to parse the HTTP payload or body and find the exact value between the beginning of our span element and its end. The result of this lookup is going to populate this variable. Let's log its value to var log LTM. Next, let's test if the value stored in this variable equals good, which means that the IP reputation query was clean. If this is the case, I'll update our error code variable to be zero. If this condition isn't met and there's any other value stored inside of this variable following our function to parse the HTTP payload, the error code will not be updated to zero and it will stay one as initially created. Next, we'll use the reply method of the response object to actually send our error code over the RPC connection back to the TCL IRL side. Let's make sure we close the if section. 
the HTTP function and the add method. The final command uses the RPC object we created earlier and invokes the listen method, essentially starting the RPC server. Let's create a message in var log ltm each time this code is executed. This is gonna match each time we update the plugin from the workspace. Now that we're done writing the code, let's copy and paste it into the box. Save the file and update the plugin. Now let's test our solution from two different locations and observe the log. The connection from this client IP is allowed. First, the TMM process locks the RPC handle that's being created by the TCL rule. Next, the SDMD or the Software Defined Module Daemon logs the Node.js output. As we can see, our method was invoked with the following arguments. Notice how this is an array. Following a successful HTTP request and response, our string module parsed the HTTP payload and the result was good. This is the reason the RPC response on the TCL IRL side of the RPC connection is zero. The connection is allowed. Next, let's test it from an attacker station. As you can see, the connection is dropped. The entire process is repeated. This time, the method is invoked with a different client IP address. Following the successful HTTP connection, the result of the HTTP payload parsing isn't a clean one. Again, anything different from the word good is considered bad reputation. This is the reason the RPC response on the TCL IRL side of the RPC connection is one, indicating an error. This is why the connection is dropped. Before I'll end this video, I just want to mention I created a GitHub repository for everything related to A5. The code I'm using in these tutorials will be shared in this repository. Part 2 of the tutorial is already here. Please check out the description below this video for the links. This is it for part 3. In the next videos, we'll discuss error and exception handling, troubleshooting techniques, and some best practices. I hope this has been informative and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!